What are we teaching our children? How are we teaching our children? Are we teaching our children? You might be asking me, so what's your point? Are we, as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, put my glasses on, he who sows sparingly also reaps sparingly, reap bountifully when we sow bountifully, not grudgingly or out of necessity. God loves a cheerful giver. Do we teach our children to thank God not only for the good things, but for those things we can't understand? We thank him anyway. How about that which has not yet been manifested? Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is assurance of things hoped for and a conviction of things not seen. Are we teaching that to our children? God has given us a way to thank him for our blessings now and to come. Willingly, paying tithes and offerings is one way to thank him. As we pay these offerings, we show that we love him and that we are being obedient to him. Are we teaching that to our children? This is a great teaching tool for our children and our grandchildren. 2 Corinthians 9, Paul writes about being a cheerful giver. Moses in Deuteronomy 6, 7 through 9. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate. Basically, what he's saying is we are to teach our successive, successive generations to maintain obedience to God's laws to ensure they live safely in the land. Are we teaching that to our children? Knowing God and his truth begins with the child's understanding of the importance of tithing the best. Genesis 4, 1 through 9. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Okay, so basically, are we teaching our children that there are, qu are consequences to not giving our best? God is not happy. Our best pleases him. So um, it's not always pat him on the back and say, oh, that's a great job. Because sometimes, and I've done it myself, I've begrudgingly at the beginning, before I really knew what tithes and offerings was, I begrudgingly would give my tithe. Like, oh, we don't have the money, or I could do something else with this money. And our children will follow after us. So if we don't teach our children now, those of you that have small children, and even those of us that are older, we need to show them how important it is to, if you get $10 for your birthday or whatever, then $1 of that $10 goes for offering. It should be the first tithe, the best tithe. We need to be remember that we need to also teach our children there are consequences. You know, we need to, not that Cain's gonna, or older brother's gonna kill a younger brother, certainly, 
but there are consequences. God's not happy if we give second best. He is happy if we give the best. Parents, you have been given the privilege of being stewards. The meaning of stewards is an official appointed one to supervise or watch over and train. Of our children's lives, for we are... We, that, 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 that. Parents, you have been given the privilege of being stewards of your children's lives for a very short time. But the teaching and training you provide is eternal. What a blessing it is to see your child succeed in school or in sports. There is no greater blessing than to see your child cheerfully and willingly give their best offering to God. Parents and grandparents, start training your child. Praise your child when your child gives 10% or more cheerfully. And if they get a bit stingy, use that as a teachable moment. Let your child know when and what you are praying for and when your prayers have been answered. Allow your child to be able to rejoice in the blessings.